Good morning. Oh, let me see if I can work out how to pin. Hey. Hey, Adele. I want to see if I can um, pin something. I've never tried to pin something before. Pin comment. Oh! Good morning. Welcome to Justice Right Now. Session five. Every week, Wednesdays, 11.58 a.m. till 12.32 p.m. A 30-minute writing workout. Get your writing utensils ready. Um, inspired by black writers and unpacking writing as activism. How is everyone doing? Yes, Jerome. Yes, Nadia. Hey, how is everyone doing? My hair is wet. Sorry, I made a very bold decision to wash my hair immediately before doing this. But my scalp was very dry. How are we all? Oh, crack my spine. Shall we get started? Hopefully you've got everything you need to write. Hello. If you're new, give me a wave as well and let me know your name so I can say hello. Yes, Jerome. That's all very good. I'm glad that you're back with us. All right, let's get your writing utensils ready. Welcome to Justice Right Now. Every week we have a similar structure. Um... I've got a prompt poem from an amazing black writer that we can watch or listen to. I always post in, um, that video in my feed 24 hours before so that you can prep if you're that way inclined. And um, we'll then do a three minute free write off the back of that. We'll then go into a speed writing exercise where we'll write 10 poems back to back. Super, super fast. Um, we'll then take four communal breaths and I'll give you some homework that you can choose to do or not do, up to you. Hey, how are you doing? So um, today, I I'm trying to innovate my theme. So usually I'd use the theme disruption as opportunity, but the more I've been reading, the more I felt like it would be interesting to give every session its own theme. And today I really wanted to think about, about truth and about historical truths and, you know, having all these statues ripped down and this idea that a lot of history is... Um, written by the victor, um, usually the person that, or the group of people that decimated the most other people and how narratives can be shifted and history can be articulated and the words that we choose and whether that is truthful or not and how facts are presented. And I wanted to think about the role of the writer and how writers can often um, provide a counter narrative you know, how a lot of writers are often put in prisons, often have to flee countries because they're often writing another version of the truth um, that is maybe on the flip side of that. Um, and I, I this, this term poetic truth was something that I Googled. I was like, oh, the idea of poetic truth, that probably exists, right? And it was actually coined by Aristotle. <laughs> the philosopher Aristotle coined the term poetic truth. And I just wanted to read to you Hey, how's it going, Tracy? Long time. Um, I wanted to basically just read to you this definition from Aristotle of the idea of poetic truth. Um, I'm dyslexic, remember, so whenever I read anything, I'm like, oh, <laughs> but I'll read it to you. It says, um, it, this is just like from online, but it says, Aristotle was the first who declared poetic truth to be, a su to be superior to historical truth. He called poetry the most philosophic of all writings, but the poet's truth is such that sees into the heart of things and enables others to see the same. Poetic truth tries, ties all mankind with love and a sense of oneness. And I just, that really kind of blew my mind. And I've always felt like I've known that, this idea that, you know, sometimes facts don't capture the feeling of a thing. Sometimes, you know, if you read a recant of something it doesn't capture the emotion um and I think poets can do that in a way that is really essential so that's my theme for today um we've got a poem from the collection uh a portable paradise by Roger Robinson an absolutely amazing collection by people p people p what is going on I need to start doing vocal warm-ups before these you know uh by people p, p I did it again <laughs> People Tree Press, 
um, A Portable Par Paradise by People Tree Press. Um, an absolutely amazing collection. Um, Roger Robinson is the poet that inspires the speed writing every single week. So I thought it would be really nice to use a poem from his. And it's The Missing. Um, and I've got a really nice video of him reading that. So let's flip the camera around and have a listen. I'm always really bad at this. This poem is called... Did, it, did I just pause? Let me try that again. Let me try that again. This poem is called The Missing of the Victims of the Grenfell Tower Fire Disaster. As if their bodies became lighter. Ten of those seated in the front pew of the church began to float and then to lie as if on a bed of pure air, then down the aisle as if on a conveyor belt, past the congregants, some of them dropping to their knees in prayer, muttering, what about me, Lord? Why not me? The risen moving slowly, so slowly down the aisle, out the gothic doors of the church and up into the clouds, finches darting deftly between them. Ten streets away, a man tries to hold on to the feet of his floating wife, and at times her force pulls him slightly off the ground. His grip slips and falls to his knees with just her high heel shoes in his hands. As she's backlit by the sun, he shields and squints his eyes. From a tower block, a hundred people start floating out the window. From far enough away, it could look like black smoke from a spreading flame. A blue indigo hijab flapping in the breeze, a man with his child on his shoulders, men in sand-colored galabeers, a woman with vintage glasses and an Elvis quiff floating slowly, so slowly, someone looking on may think them arrivants to earth like human lantern wishes. They became the city of the missing and we became the city of the state. Okay, so that was an amazing poem by Roger Robinson there from Portable Paradise about the Grenfell Tower fire. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was, it really, especially this, Roger Robinson does this really spectacularly. I think often things that actually happen, and I found this with some verbatim pieces. So you get these pieces that take testimonials of people in situations where it just takes word for word what they said. Sometimes you can read verbatim pieces and think it's so hard hitting that it almost, you can't comprehend it. And I think some situations are so horrific or so difficult. Um, if you're not there, it's hard to get your head around. And I think Roger Robinson's really good at using more surreal or magic imagery to capture the real poetic truth um, of a situation. Um, so I wanted to think about that. So we're gonna free write for three minutes off the back of that piece. The title was The Missing, which you can keep if you want. If you've never free written before, I just want you to write freely without thinking as much as possible. <laughs> try and feel, try and breathe. The main thing is to not stop, like your hand should ache when you get to the end of it. Just write. If you free write all of the time, um, I've got some extra prompts for you as usual, which is to lean into surreal and magic imagery to try and unpack what you're feeling. Get as weird as possible, right? Um, if you miss the poem, just take those prompts as you wish. You can use the title from Roger's poem if you want, The Missing. If you've got any questions, let me know while I set up the timer. Hey Adele, I really want to see what you write today. Blueprint Collective in the house, very nice to see you. Cool, doesn't look like there's any questions. So um, I type really fast. If you want to mute me, you can. Some people like the sound of it. 
but um, your three minute free ride starts now. Let's go. If you've just come in, we're in the middle of a free write. You've still got a minute and a half, so just write whatever you want for that time before I give you the next prompt. Okay. Hey, Chloe. That's our first three minutes up. Well done. You've written at least one thing today. We're going to move on to the speed writing section of our justice right now. And this is a um, exercise that I remixed directly from, from Roger Robinson. Amazing. That's what I love to hear. You did something new. You tried something new. I try and try one thing new every single day of my life <laughs> um, and it's been very fruitful for me so thank you thank you thank you thank you for doing that I know it takes a lot um, so we're gonna speed write an exercise remix from Roger Robinson we're gonna do 10 poems back to back the way it will work is I'll give you a title you'll then have one minute to write a six line something with that title now this exercise only works if you tell yourself I have to write six lines I don't care if they're spelt wrong. I don't care if they don't really make sense. I don't care if they're weird. My friend Bogdan Piasecki always says, shit your way to greatness. You've got to write a whole lot of shit things to write one thing that is great. So lean into that. Keep leaning into the weirdness and the surrealism, but you have to write those six lines, even if it's the same word over and over and over again. Also, I say a poem could be a bit of a song, could be a bit of dialogue, could be a bit of an essay whatever you want, lean into whatever you need to lean, lean into. There's a whole lot going on. And now is your time to vent and express and process those emotions. If you wanna be jammy and you wanna challenge yourself, write more than six lines. If you wanna challenge, challenge yourself, try and loop all of them into one long 60 line something. Today, all of the titles are 
titles of books by black writers that maybe you should go and buy. <laughs> there are many, many books, but I chose 10 of um, my favourites. A lot of them are British authors, because I feel like um, when I first started reading, I was like, actually, I really want to focus on on that that narrative. So um, not all, but most of them are black British writers writing amazing poems in this country and experts in their respective fields. Any questions? Any questions? If you just jumped in, you can still write 10 poems. Shall we go? We've not got long. Only 15 minutes left. So your first title is Teaching My Mother How to Give Birth. And that's by Wasan Shire. Teaching My Mother How to Give Birth by Wasan Shire. But you just take the title. I'm just telling you the name of the author so you can credit them if you carry on using the title. And also, if you like it, maybe you can go and buy something of theirs. Um, but the title is teaching my mother how to give birth. You've got one minute to write a six line something with that title, starting now. Okay, the next collection is, and your next title is, Muscular Music. That's a title from Terence Hayes. Muscular Music. I'll post all of these in my feed afterwards as a reference. Muscular Music is your next title. Your one minute to write six line something starts now. Okay, the next title is Don't Call Us Dead, and that's by Denez Smith. Don't Call Us Dead is the title. Your one minute to write six lines of something with the title Don't Call Us Dead starts now.
Why do I care that I spelt that word wrong? Okay, sorry. Breaking my own rules. Your next title is Breaking Silence. And that's from a collection by Jacob Sam LaRose, one of my favorites. The title is Breaking Silence. Try and remember to breathe, but keep writing. You're one minute to write six lines of something. If you've just dumped in, pick up your writing utensils. Your title is Breaking, breaking Silence. And you're gonna write six lines in one minute, starting now. Okay, we're nearly halfway. Your next title is My Name Is Why. Like the question, why? W-H-Y. My Name Is Why. And that's from a collection by Lem Sisse. My Name Is Why is your next title. You've got one minute to write six lines of something with the title My Name Is Why, starting now. Okay, we are halfway now. Your next title is Surge, which is actually the collection we worked from last week by J. Bernard. The title is Surge. You've got six minutes, six minutes? Imagine, gassed. You've got one minute to write six lines of something starting now with the title Surge. Let's go. Keep breathing, Deborah. Your next title is from the collection that we used in our previous, um, our previous free write. 
Portable Paradise by Roger Robinson. Your next title is Portable Paradise. You've got one minute to write six lines of something with the title Portable Paradise, starting now. Three more to go. If your hands are feeling uncomfortable, try and lean into that discomfort. Find something new to write about. Use this as an opportunity to vent any anger, disruption, rage you've been feeling. Now's the time to yeah, push it out through your fingertips. Our next title is Hold Tight. This isn't a poetry collection, but it's an amazing book about grime and black Br British masculinity. Got the subtitle wrong, but roundabout. Hold Tight is your title, and that's a book by Jeffrey Bawachi. Don't know if I pronounced that right. Um, I tried to Google the pronunciation, but yeah. Hold Tight is your next title. Like I said, I'll post these with the full listing of authors afterwards so you can reference them correctly. But your title is Hold Tight. You've got one minute to write six lines of something with the title Hold Tight. Let's go. Two more to go. You've got this, you've got this. Our penultimate title is very in keeping with what I was just saying. The Perseverance. The Perseverance is your title and that's from Ray Antrobus. The Perseverance is your title. You've got one minute to write six lines with the title Perseverance starting now. Let's go. Okay, and our final title from one of my favourite poets, Kaio Chingonyi, is Some Bright Elegance, is your final title. 
And that's from a pamphlet by Kaio Chingonyi. Your final title is Some Bright Elegance. Your final... I got so... I got so caught in the bright elegance there that I had lost my mind. Um, your final minute starts now. The title is Some Bright Elegance. Let's go. Okay, your time is up. Your time is up. 11 poems done. 11 poems done. I always post these in my feed afterwards and what I'll do is I'll list all of those titles again and reference the writers so that you can follow them. And if you do, I'll give you some homework in a minute that you can apply to some of this writing. If you decide to keep any of the titles, just make sure you reference the writer that you've used it from. And in poetry, we generally try and say after Kaio Chingonyi or after Ray Antrobus. Yeah, your hand will hurt. Props to you. <laughs> I have very muscular hands now. That was a weird thing to say. <laughs> Um, just a few notes before we do our communal breaths and I give you some homework. Um, if any of you live in the borough of Brent or know any young people that live in a, the borough of Brent, um, or just any people that live in the borough of Brent, I'm about to do a two and a half hour workshop on Zoom that's free through the Blueprint Collective. So if you're interested in that, holler at me, I can quickly send you the link. Also, Cambridge University Press for the next four days are putting out, um, complete books to download regarding race, protests and civil rights. So if you want the link to those free books, let me know and I'll, I can send that out to you as well. Please check that out. A really amazing resource out there at the moment. So we've just written very, very intensely. Let's just try and ground our feet flat on the floor, sit up straight and we're going to take four box breaths together through the nose and out of the mouth. So we inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four. And we're gonna do that four times together. It's always tempting to skip this bit, but please stay here, you've just done a lot. And let's take a second. So we're gonna hold, breathe in, hold, breathe out, hold, Breathe in, hold, breathe out, hold, breathe in, hold, breathe out, hold. Breathe in, hold, breathe out, and hold. Oh, that was hard today, which usually says something about where I'm at. These are really valuable check-ins for me, so thank you for joining me today. Um, your homework is to take as much as what you've written that you like today as possible. Maybe take some stuff that you don't like, that's always interesting. And to edit it to be as surreal and magic as you can. Thinking about that sense of poetic truth. 
Is there a historical moment, be that personally, universally, nationally or whatever? Is there a moment happening right now that you want to capture poetically that captures that feeling, that, that core sense accurately, but by pushing the realms of reality? Because, I mean, in so many ways, the realms of reality are being pushed in a way that is beyond conception right now. Hopefully that makes sense. Please do send me your writing if you want to. It's always a joy to read it. And thank you for joining me here today. We've run over by a few minutes, so I'll quickly pop off. Have an amazing day. Take care.